गाइस आई एम समकेत जैन अ मेडिकल स्टूडेंट एट विनसा नेशनल मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटी एंड आई एम एन इंस्पायरिंग माइंड स्टूडेंट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू सीरीज ऑफ एनाटमी इन विच बेसिकली वी विल ट्राई टू कवर मोस्ट ऑफ द हाई एंड टॉपिक्स ऑफ एनाटमी सब्जेक्ट एंड राइट नाउ वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद अपर लेम सो द फर्स्ट हाई एंड टॉपिक दैट कम्स अंडर द अपर लेम इज योर एक्जिलरी आर्टरी एंड इट्स ब्रांचेस and guys for further updates you can subscribe to our youtube channel and also follow us on instagram at inspiring minds coaching so let's start with axillary artery axillary artery basically is the continuation of subclavian artery when subclavian artery reaches the lower border of rib 1 it is known as axillary artery from that point similarly when axillary artery reaches to the lower border of teres major muscle at that point it is referred to as brachial artery so axillary artery is the continuation of subclavian artery and axillary artery continues as brachial artery so all in all the extent of axillary artery is from the lower border of rib 1 to the lower border of teres major muscle now let's see that what are the different parts of axillary artery uh suppose this is a pectoralis minor muscle some part of axillary artery this is your axillary artery some part of your axillary artery goes deep to pectoralis minor muscle as you can see due to which your axillary artery is now divided into three parts one is the proximal part this is the deep part and here we have the distal part and now for our convenience let's call them as one two three proximal part deep part that is deep to pectoralis minor muscle and then is your distal part so these are the three parts of axillary artery now the next thing that we should know is that how many branches arises from which part for that we have a very basic cheat code or whatever you say that from the first part of axillary artery we have only one branch arising from the second part we have two branches and from the third part we have three branches now let's see that what are these branches and which branch arises from which part for that let me just draw the diagram again here is your pectoralis minor muscle here we have your axillary artery that is distal part deep part and here we are drawing the proximal part now let's see the branches so we said that from the first part of axillary artery we have only one branch that one branch is known as superior thoracic artery superior thoracic artery the superior thoracic artery the superior thoracic artery basically supplies your first and second anterior intercostal spaces and adjacent muscles like serratus anterior so first and second anterior intercostal spaces and adjacent muscles like serratus anterior now from the second part we said two arteries arise one of them is thoraco acromial trunk it is a trunk and a trunk means that it will further divide into four branches basically what happens that this thoraco acromial trunk passes through clavi pectoral fascia here is a clavi pectoral fascia suppose cpf Clavi pectoral fascia is a fascia that covers your pectoralis minor muscle as well as your subclavius muscle. 
सो आफ्टर पियर्सिंग यू क्लाइवी पेक्टोरियल फेशिया इट गिव्स ऑफ फोर ब्रांचेस सो थोरिको एक्रोमियल ट्रंक आफ्टर पियर्सिंग थ्रू क्लाइवी पेक्टोरियल फेशिया गिव्स ऑफ फोर ब्रांचेस एक्रोमियल ब्रांच पेक्टोरियल ब्रांच क्लाविकुलर ब्रांच एंड डेल्टॉइड ब्रांच यू कैन रिमेंबर दैम एज ए पी सी डी नॉर्मली वी हैव ए बी सी डी बट फॉर द ब्रांचेस यू कैन रिमेंबर दैम एज ए पी सी डी सो दिस इज योर थोरेको एक्रोमियल ट्रंक बेटर टू राइट एवरीथिंग साइमल्टेनियसली थोरेको एक्रोमियल ट्रंक it pierces the cpf or clavi pectoral fascia that covers a pectoralis minor muscle and subclavius muscle and then it is divided into your four branches that is acromial branch pectoral branch clavicular branch and deltoid branch a p c d and this deltoid branch basically goes to your deltopectoral groove now the second artery that arises from the second part is your lateral thoracic artery basically this is coming from the back from the deep parts we have lateral thoracic artery now as the name suggests lateral so the lateral thoracic artery it will go lateral to the pectoralis minor muscle it will go lateral to the pectoralis minor muscle and then it will be supplying pectoralis minor itself pectoralis major and serratus anterior so this was about the second part of the axillary artery now let's talk about the third part of axillary artery the third part gives of three branches the first branch is your subscapular artery now the important point about the subscapular artery is that it is the longest branch of axillary artery out of all the branches that we have studied and whatever we are going to study now this branch is the longest branch of the axillary artery and another important point is that subscapular artery runs along with a nerve it runs along with a nerve known as thoraco dorsal nerve aka nerve to latissimus dorsi therefore subscapular artery is the largest artery largest branch of the axillary artery and it runs along with the nerve that is thoraco dorsal nerve also known as nerve to latissimus dorsi so as the name suggests that it will go and supply your latissimus dorsi so let's write it subscapular artery longest branch along with a nerve to latissimus dorsi i have written thoraco dorsal in diagram and another important point is that this subscapular artery also gives of a branch known as circumflex scapular artery circumflex scapular artery so gives a branch gives a branch known as circumflex scapular artery that takes part in scapular anastomosis now for the rest two branches of the third part of axillary artery suppose that here we have surgical neck of humerus this is the surgical neck of humerus so 
one artery that arises from the third part is anterior circumflex humeral artery as the name suggests anterior that is it is anterior to something and now it is anterior to anterior circumflex humeral anterior to the humerus it is anterior to the surgical neck of humerus making the anterior loop around the surgical neck of humerus and therefore it is known as anterior circumflex humeral artery ACHA and if we have anterior then we should have posterior therefore we have another branch arising from the third part is posterior circumflex scapular artery these dotted lines represent that it is going to the posterior side of the surgical neck of humerus and both these arteries then anastomose another important point is that your posterior circumflex humeral artery it runs along with a nerve known as axillary nerve it runs along with a nerve known as axillary nerve so in the entero inferior dislocation of the humerus these two the that is the posterior circumflex humeral artery and your axillary nerve are most likely to be injured so this is your pcha and here we have your axillary nerve so we have anterior circumflex humeral artery that runs along the anterior part of the surgical neck of humerus and then we have posterior circumflex humeral artery that goes to the posterior part of surgical neck of humerus and both ACH and PCH and estomos whereas posterior circumflex humeral artery runs along with axillary nerve that's the important point let's summarize all the branches once again so the first branch that arises from the the axillary artery is divided into three parts proximal part deep part and distal part the uh, from the proximal part only one branch arises from the deep part we have two branches and from the distal part we have three branches now the only branch arising from the proximal part is your superior thoracic artery that supply that give branches to your first and second anterior intercostal spaces and your adjacent muscles like serratus anterior now the first branch that arises from your deep part that is the second part is your thoracoacromial trunk that will pierce the cpf and then it will give off its four branches that is acromial branch pectoral branch clavicular branch and deltoid branch another branch arising from the deep part is lateral thoracic artery that goes to the lateral side of the pectoralis minor and supplies the pectoralis minor muscle pectoralis major muscle and your serratus anterior from the third part we have three arteries that is the subscapular artery that is the largest branch of the axillary artery and subscapular artery also gives of a branch that is CSA or circumflex scapular artery that takes part in scapular anastomosis another branches that we have from the third part or the distal part of axillary artery are ACHA anterior circumflex humeral artery that goes to the anterior part of the surgical neck of humerus and then we have your PCHA posterior circumflex humeral artery that goes to the posterior part of the surgical neck of humerus and runs along with axillary nerve so the two nerves that are to be that should uh, that are important here are your thoracodorsal nerve and another one is your axillary nerve thoracodorsal nerve is also known as nerve to latissimus dorsa so this was all about your axillary artery and its branches for further updates please subscribe our channel and you can also follow us on instagram that is at inspiring minds coaching thank you so much guys